Hey everyone, we're not dead. Again. <laughs> yeah, we kind of had to take a little hiatus. We both have been busy with other things. The real world. Yeah. That's what we've been busy with. So, but luckily, uh, luckily we're in the heart of summer now where the only thing, well, the only thing to do after the 4th of July is just work and then do once in a while fun stuff. So that includes movies. Thank God. And... I think you know what we're seeing next week, but uh, we we won't talk, say anything about that until later. But for right now, uh, we're just going to give a quick uh, spiel about what we've actually seen in the recent months, uh, both before and after uh, Boss Baby. Uh, well, I had a more uh, reportable winter slash early spring than he did. But uh, he saw something that you might uh, all disagree with on. But then again, what's the big surprise about that? Uh, so for me, I'm going to just uh, list off a few movies that I saw that actually did uh, deserve a bit of critiquing about them. And all for different reasons. My first one uh, was the Smurfs Lost Village. Yes, I saw Smurfs alone. I'm alive right now, so why should I even stop uh, giving myself shame? But, like most of the movies I'm about to talk about, I saw them when I had free time while I was uh, still going to school and also working a night job. So these were all just during the day to kill time, and yeah, they definitely show for it. So, Smurfs Lost Village, it is, it's not that bad, it's still stupid. But it's not that bad. Compared to reactions and um, also reviews of the first live-action Smurfs, it doesn't even compare to being as painful or as predictably painful. Because with the movie being entirely in animation, luckily they're able to control a lot of the atmosphere and settings, something that you couldn't do very well with the three-dimensional animation in the real world and how, like, not real it didn't look but with this one it keeps continuity yay um th also this one wasn't too bad because again with it being fully animation they were able to do a lot more visual comedy with uh with quick animation as well as like actual snappy situations and that actually did provide for a likability to it as well what's dumb about it is well what else the story and also, like, the conclusion on this. Guess what The Lost Village is? Spoilers! Well, I actually asked you, uh, earlier today. I started off by just asking him, what do you think The Lost Village is? What were your first answers? Trolls. Nope. Dumb. Yes, but not specific enough. Smurfettes. They're all female counterparts of the original Smurfs, since the... Original Smurfs were all male, and Smurfette was the random one. There, there now is a all-female Smurf village, and that does offer for an interesting idea, even for a longer movie to be made around. But no, they still focus on like the uh, original, well, original Smurfette, the one from the uh, male Smurf village. Now, Jesus, this is getting a lot more descriptive than I needed to. Well, see, the thing I don't get is Smurfette was created by Gargamel. Yeah, I forgot how they explained that in the movie. And it, well, you could probably figure out it's out of left field. And yeah, they end up stopping Gargamel from his evil plot, blah, 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 blah. He gets his come up, he gets his come up by a familiar, uh, like, animal villain from, or, that we've experienced earlier. But also another bright side was the voice cast. Completely different. Uh, they actually got likable people like Demi... Well, I like Demi Lovato. Don't judge me. Uh, and also she doesn't do that bad in this. But they also got Jack McBriar, who has a funny voice. Uh, crap, who else? Yeah, some of the other names I might have forgotten. But uh, Ryan Wilson, uh, Dwight from The Office, is Gargamel in this. And he makes for a lot more likable and actually more funny Gargamel than I was expecting because he acts as zany as he did in the cartoon. So 
that's that's still a more relatable Gargamel than Hank Azaria's ever was, because the zaniness the zaniness he does in this makes a lot more sense because it's still kept in the same universe as well as the same tone as the original Smurfs. But it's still, it, but yeah, it's all made. The tagline is though everyone has a Smurfette in them. They again they base it around Smurfette and try and push like a courageous and be brave campaign even though smurfette has no quality to her besides just girl so you're really stretching it right there and also big shock this was made entirely by women your point i was just going to say exactly when you said she's got nothing else to her than that she's a girl and it's like there you go so how can you stretch out a movie to be like to have ultimately one tagline about a character that has no tagline to be made about because she's a girl. <laughs> everyone, every, everyone has a little bit of girl in them. That's what they're trying to say. Or men need to be more like girls. And girls need to be gr girly, girler. Or, be, to be stronger girls. I guess. I don't know. Well, okay, so what we're, get, it's, what we're it's getting almost, from this... You're, 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 it's starting to sound like Ghostbusters. The new Ghostbusters oh in a way. Oh my god. That, made, that just made us sound incredibly anti-women. We're not anti-women! Oh, we are not in the in, at all, but I kind of hate the whole bullshit feminism of, well, women are superior to men. You just gotta... You just gotta they just don't you realize just, it yet. You just gotta accept it. Yeah. Well, I don't think that's I don't think that's too much of what's happening now, but it honestly might be on the way to it. Anyway, Smurf Slots Village, it was worth my time. But these next two, and yes, they're two in one slot because they're the exact same movie. These two, were, I only found were passable, and one of them was the most was one of the most anticipated movies of this year, Fast and Furious Eight. Yes. Fast and Furious 8 was, uh, I dare to say, boring. Uh, uh, again, because cool shit happened in it, but ultimately it led to, it resulted in nothing. Exactly like, uh, well, yeah, exactly like uh, the new Triple X movie, which is also what's going to be on here. Triple X, I've, uh, like, yeah, Return of Xander Cage. Both of them are the exact same movie with Vin Diesel. The plot is that Vin Diesel is going to be the character that he is in both of those movies. I know the specific names, Dom Toretto and Xander Cage, but they do the exact same thing. They're stuntmen who do crazy shit. So it starts out with both of them doing crazy shit, like one cr gigantic crazy stunt. One of them is uh, skiing down a tropical like mountain or whatever. The other is a, a drag race in an old car in Cuba or the, the fucking Caribbean. And... They both result in cool shit and a punchline at the end. Uh, they're both approached by uh, shady women who force him to go on a mission to go get something and return it back only for the woman to use it for evil purposes and to screw over the hero in the end. Even though the hero always wins and brings in his backup and team... And whatever other fucking surprises they try and throw at you. Ugh. That might make me hate uh, Fast and Furious 8 more because I saw that after I saw Triple X. Triple X, uh, okay, I have, a re I have the reaction, the same reaction to both of these, but both for sort of different reasons. Triple X... I saw the first one. I liked it. It was, it was because I saw it when I was 13. I'm talking with my hands a lot. Okay, so yeah, I saw it when I was 13, and I actually really enjoyed it because it's cool action. There's a stunt guy in it. He says cool stuff. He gets the girl in the end. Hippity fucking Ray. Then the second one came out. Again, I was at an appropriate age when I saw it, and I thought it was okay. Ice Cube surprisingly didn't make for that bad of an action hero, and there were some parts about it that I actually cared. Still, the idea of stopping the assassination, the planned assassination of the president of the United States from the inner government isn't that bad of an idea. It could be done a lot better, but 
yeah, this still the second one was well. Again, I saw it at the appropriate age, but now I realize that one was stupid. The first one is a guilty pleasure by every definition of the word. This one, ugh, it was just flat because they played it safe and they tried throwing in story twists about how, uh, like the villain, the supposed villain right away meets the hero. The villain explains what he wants with it and turns into a hero by the end to fight the real villain. And still, that's the exact same thing they do in Fast and Furious 8. There are so many parallels to this. But, um... Yeah, it, it was still mainly very predictable. You could think about every moment that was going to happen, and it did happen. When it, they were incredibly formulaic in show the character show the motivation, show the stuff they're going to use, show the stuff they need to do, get it done, turn around, uh, uh, twist, quote-unquote twist, and then fight back, the end. Happy ending. But even though that sounds like a multi-step process, that's exactly the step, the steps that happen during an action movie, true or false? Mm, that happens in a lot of movies, honestly. But regardless... Since these movie, well, the Fast and Furious movies have become sort of formulaic. This, uh, the last one, sort they, of. Have, how many Fast and Furious movies have you seen? One. The first one? Yes. I've seen the first one, the second and one. And I still am surprised this movie warranted sequels, huh? Oh, they've they've stretched this fucking thin, but it's only because it's got cool cars in it. It's got witty catchphrases and other cool shit happens in it one of the only cool things that okay also cool shit that happens in both of these movies uh the cool shit that happened in the first triple x was actually pretty fucking cool vin diesel outrunning an avalanche that's cool uh vin diesel chasing down uh a, uh, a nuclear missile ridden uh like speedboat down a river in a city that's cool. Him paras him parachuting out from a car is cool. The shit they did in the second one was beyond unrealistic, and both in uh, triple in the third triple X as well as uh, Fast and Furious Eight. The only cool things that happened in those are stuff they showed in the trailer. The cool shit that they ha uh, had in triple X was. Uh, the right away the skiing down a tropical mountain, meaning no snow. And it was actually a long fucking way. And yeah, Vin Diesel just, just does it to get cable to a local village. And in um, in Fast and Furious 8, it's when they have the cars raining down from the parking garage. And when and once in a while, a cool thing will happen uh, during the submarine chase over the frozen lake. At the end, big shock, they win. Um, but yeah. Not much is not much is done in uh, those two movies. They could have done a lot more, but they still tried to play it safe only to bring back the name and bring back the familiarity so they can rake in some nostalgia money. And although for, that's triple X for Fast and Furious 8, it's still just being formulaic. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So they're just pl they're playing it safe. There were some cool cars. And some cool stuff that happened in both, but Triple X, uh, well, Triple X was still a little bit worse because there's not as much familiarity and the scale is still smaller on it compared to Fast and Furious 8. Well, obviously, because there's eight movies in that series, but yeah, both of those were flat. And my, my last one, my last movie that I'm talking about, because I know he wants to get to Wonder Woman uh, soon, but. Um, yeah, Spark, a space tale. And I say that title because you hear the word tale, what's the first thing you think of? No, it's not T-A-L-E, which is what it should be called. It's space tale, T-A-I-L, because it's a goddamn monkey. This is a... I saw this off of a whim back in, like, fucking February or something, and I had no idea what it was. It was made by six, five to six production companies. You see why in the end. Um, but yeah, this is so bland, so boring, so 
lack of creativity that I might call it the worst movie of the entire year if I don't see anything worse later on. It is that bad. Um, you heard our opinions on The Boss Baby and how lackluster that was. That is a fucking Oscar winner animated film compared to this garbage. The animation is cheap. It looks like a video game from back in 2010. It looks like a TV, sh it looks like a 3D animated TV show from either now or like five years ago on Nick Jr. or something. So bad. Uh, the story, it's Lion King meets Space Chimps. They're, out, they're in outer space, but oh, they have a perfect kingdom, which is taken over by an evil person or animal in this case. The little, the young one is separated from its family after the father dies. And later on in his life, the young one has to return to his kingdom, defeat the bad guy and make everyone proud. <sighs> I'm not even kidding. That's how it goes. And they got talented actors behind this. Two Oscar winners and a famous theater actor. Susan Sarandon, Hilary Swank, Patrick Stewart, and Jessica Biel. Those four recognizable names are in this movie. Oh my God. Ugh. When I was sitting in it, I was, well, granted I was the only one in the theater at two in the afternoon on a Tuesday or Thursday afternoon. And I was still literally saying, what was going to happen next? Oh, gee, there's nothing bad in that cave at all. I I had a solo episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Ugh. And, yeah, the characters and the dialogue also are next to nothing. They say the, they say the phrase, well, not phrase, but they say the uh, linkage, 13 years, 13 years old. I've spent 13 years on this rock. I've been waiting 13 years. They say that more than the song Seven Years by Lucas Graham. And I hate that song, by the way. And I just showed him the trailer like a few minutes ago. Ugh. I don't know how you could not like just say, what is this tripe after seeing that? Well, then again, I'm putting words into your mouth. Oh, I... Uh, okay. I mean, it looks it looks like a cheaper version of the Ratchet and Clank movie, essentially. And that's what all the YouTube comments ha are saying and have been saying they, for they a while. Up, they straight up stole the catchphrase. Uh, Kick some asteroid. Yeah, <laughs> from that movie. And it's funny is because Ratchet and Clank, while didn't look anywhere near as it was it was cheap, but it didn't look as cheap as this movie either. And I'm willing to bet, without even seeing it, that Ratchet and Clank probably had a lot more going for it than this. This, I mean, the trailer just is so cynical, and it it it's got filled with so many buzzwords and cheap ass comedy to the. Oh my God! It, yeah. I, yep. Oh yeah. We're I gonna take back our planet. Can we use the bathroom first? Yes. Or if he was a funny kid, he would have just said, no, hold it. I'm not seeing this movie. You don't need to. <laughs> I'm not going to. Uh, actually, now that you say that, you might have coerced me into making you see nope, it. Nope, nope, you're not doing it. You, you, you try to take me to it, I'm walking out. <laughs> it, it's not in theaters. It was only in theaters for, then, a, then for yeah. a cup of coffee. It, I swear, it probably was only in theaters for like a few months. This... In t this movie's box, o box office entirely throughout the entire country and since it's like premiere back in t 2016 <coughs> at some random fucking film festival it's made only like a hundred thousand dollars at the box office I could be wrong on that I might change that figure later but I'm not even kidding this didn't even break five hundred thousand dollars in profit what was its budget? It, uh, it didn't even say what the budget was. And this was made by five production companies, possibly more. You know the... Well, have you seen um, a Family Guy bit on YouTube where uh, they go to... Well, Peter and Brian go to a movie theater and the joke is, Oh, I like seeing all the... Um, all the opening credit sequences where the production companies think they got you sucked into a movie. It's like... 
snippet after snippet of oh Toonbox Entertainment, uh, something something Studios, and then it literally goes into oh Kill Time uh, production companies, where it like leads you off. That's what I thought was happening in the beginning of this movie. I was just saying why why isn't this starting? Because there were so many production logos that were right before this. So yeah, five companies couldn't get this off of the ground. That's how, like, nothing this movie is. It just was a snippet in someone's mind and disappeared. Just nothing. That's what this movie is, even though I unfortunately will be the only person who will ever remember that this movie existed. Spark, a space tale, also known as Space Chimps with the Lion King of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. And Ratchet and Clank. Meet Ratchet and Clank. Okay, and I only, we really only have like one minute left, so okay, quick, really quick review. I saw Wonder Woman, and uh, unfortunately, I really didn't like it, and you know, but I do understand why people do like it, but it's not a very good reason, for, in my opinion anyway. It's essentially a Marvel movie. You might be saying, wait, no, Wonder Woman's DC. Yes, that may be true, but this movie is, in essence, a Marvel movie with DC skin. It's got all the same elements to it. The stupid, simple story, the abysmal comedy and tonal shifts and everything else to it. And really, I all, that's all I can think of why everyone is praising the hell out of this movie is because they're like, oh, hey, this is just like all those other painfully mediocre Marvel movies that we've seen before. Or at least he's seen before. Well, <laughs> it's just, and, and see, that, that to me is just really disappointing because this movie had a lot, a lot going for it. I mean, it takes place during World War One, and you thought they would play into that aspect a little bit, but no, the World War One aspect is, is just very casually thrown in here just to uh, give the movie a little bit more gravitas to make it seem like what's happening is super... It's uh, important to history. It's important, and it's or super serious, but of course, they don't take it really that seriously. Well, okay, excuse me. They do take it seriously. They do show some grim realities of what World War I was, uh, but... But it's, then they get into... It's sandwiched, like Marvel movies, all this... Whatever dark or serious stuff they do is always sandwiched in between really, really stupid jokes. I mean, Chris Pine is so most, most specifically the Jim Leahy sexy talk. They yes, there's a lot of sex <laughs> talk in this movie of like because she does because she's never met a man before, so she wants to know how how his dick works or what what attracts him to women and everything. It's just it's so annoying and. And really, it hurts the character, too, because Wonder Woman is not bad, but she's so stupidly naive and annoying because the majority of this movie, like the first two thirds of this movie, is a whole like fish out of water comedy as she comes, as she leaves her paradise island and goes to London and she doesn't understand how any of the stuff works. And so it's a, you, you, you get that, you get that sort of shitty daytime sitcom type comedy that you expect from Marvel movies, but now here in DC. And oh, I'm, I'm just not a fan. The very few good things I could say about this movie is that yes, the action's pretty cool. Uh, they handle the theme of like women being, uh, you know, women being as capable as men surprisingly well. Like we just we just talked about how shitty they handled it in uh, in Smurfs and Ghostbusters did a shitty job too. Here here it's handled surprisingly well because she works a lot with men and they never talk down to the men they never they never talk down to the women that's so that's good it's um you know it's a very it's a very fair played bit of uh commentary there but however like i said a lot of really stupid jokes a lot of really bad Sand comedy sandwiching. yes it's it ultimately for me just doesn't work it 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 wants to take it wants to be oh oh let's one god I'm I'm going over my 1 minute thing but let's just say uh chemical warfare in world war 1 
Really? <laughs> do, do, s- does not exist. I'm sorry. That didn't exist. Same with not Hitler. Be, we have a Hitler character, even though he wasn't, he didn't, ex- he, Hitler wasn't Hitler in World War I. Um, I know he existed, but he wasn't, oh God, it's just. He wasn't what the, he is. The representation movie. of World War I for me in this movie is so j- jarringly distracting because of how stupid it is. It almost would have been better off if they just made a fictional war and not tried to play it into history, but whatever. I'm At this point, I'm sure everyone who's wanted to see it will see it, and you know, everyone knows me as, oh, you just hate all superhero movies and everything. It's like, okay, Not fine. all superhero movies. You like Suicide Squad. Uh, somewhat, <laughs> yeah. My my feelings uh, on that movie have changed drastically, but uh, hey, mine stay the same. Yeah. So well, uh, yeah. So I didn't really like Wonder Woman, but uh, whatever. You guys, you guys enjoy the hell out of it, okay? And we have to see another fucking baby movie. Yet now. another fucking baby movie. We come back from our hi- hiatus, and that's what we have to talk Ruthless about. Ruthless and toothless, the boss baby. Yep. Fuck off. Jeez. All right. Well, we'll be back in a little bit. So see you then. See you.